Hey, what's up, YouTube? Now I have a, I have a treasure comic to share with you. Uh, Timothy Truman, one of the most underrated artists, writers, and comics. Uh, he started out in the 80s with Scout, which was a kind of a post-apocalyptic, supernatural, kind of uh, independent comic. Uh, that was also anime influenced, by the way, back in the early 80s anime. Um, and... Uh, Timothy Truman is very much influenced by a Sam Glansman, who I've mentioned before, was a great artist. Uh, him and Wayne Van Zant uh, were pretty much uh, influenced by this uh, amazing artist, the late great Sam Glansman. And uh, this story is who is this? Simon Gurdy. Who is Simon Gurdy? Uh, Dirty Simon Gurdy. Simon Gurdy was kind of like known in, for most of American history up until probably like the middle of the last uh, of you know the last century. Uh, when Indians became, you know, more sympathetic and uh, looked at, uh, he was like a traitor. He was he was a Tory. You know, the Tories were the loyalists in the Revolutionary War. Uh, he was his name was up there with uh, as a villain, like Benedict Arnold. But as this uh, researched graphic historical narrative shows, uh, it was a very complex issue, and that's that's what I'm looking for in comics. Uh, the comic art form, I don't care what people say, it's not, it, it can be really uh, up there with literature, in my opinion, as someone who likes literature and who also likes art and is an artist of some, you know, some ability, uh, I like the combination of it, and um, this, this one was actually signed, I got a copy of this in a comic store that was in a mansion, there's a comic store located in the turn of the century mansion in Palmyra which is in the Hershey area. Uh, and Mr. Truman is actually from the Lancaster area. So it's very interesting, this uh, Pennsylvania connection. And Simon Gurdy uh, was born in uh, the planta the Quaker plantation of Pennsylvania in the uh, 18th century. He was one of those uh, many, many uh, European-descended people, in his case Irish, uh, who were captured by the Indians and raised amongst them. And then later... Uh, became kind of like a uh, an in betweener. Okay, he had he worked for the for the Americans at one point, but then he turned on them, and uh, this explains you know his motivations and whatnot. But there's no cheerleading in this. Okay, and I wanted to show a few things real here in the before I show you the art. Okay, uh, this guy Jack Jackson. By the way, this guy made made an amazing graphic novel called Lost Cause. Uh, about John Wesley Hardin and, and uh, you know the Confederate loyalists in Texas after the war. Um, you now Jack Jackson started out as an alternative comics guy, you know, in San Francisco with like Robert Crumb. Uh, but later on, he was known for making historical uh, things, especially about Texas, about the Comanche, and like I said, about John Wesley Hardin and the uh, Confederate uh, loyalists and all the craziness that happened in in. Uh, uh, post Civil War Reconstruction, and he writes something here that this is in a nutshell. This is from like the early '90s, uh, and this guy is saying something very reasonable. Okay, uh, he, he's talking about uh, this comic. He has given us the nuances. Oh, that word again of Gertie's era, as few other chroniclers have. Seldom are events really good or bad, black or white. In wilderness, instead, we get a sense of the era's complexity. Politically, culturally, racially, and on an individual level as well. All right? So now, <clears throat> this is nuance for the sake of nuance. These guys aren't trying to deconstruct anything. They're actually trying to show what happened. To be chroniclers who value truth. Okay? And so now I'll go to uh, Timothy Truman's forward here. Uh, which, and this is, the, like I said, this is the early 90s. Okay? Uh, the wilderness doesn't paint Simon Gurdy as a villain. Like I said, Simon Gurdy was remembered as a villain uh, throughout American history. Neither have I sought to whitewash him as a freedom-fighting hero. I've only examined the very evidence that Butterfield and other biographers are presented in their own works. Okay, but less clouded by the era of manifest destiny in which they lived, and the tunnel vision and unfortunate racism that it bred. Nor have I taken what I believe is the equally racist and simplistic stance that would picture most westward-moving whites is a merciless horde whose main purpose was to subjugate and destroy a race of noble, uh, childlike, and helpless forest dwellers who lived in a perfect utopia. Okay? Right. Both of these races were capable of the greatest acts of love and the most horrendous displays of brutality. 
that they were uh, holy and equally human. Okay, uh, I mean that's all we're getting at, right, guys? <laughs> Us evil right wing dudes. Anyway, so now the art. Now this was only in black and white ever. This was never in color. Um, and look at this art, man. Look at the detail. Okay, uh, from the musket to the powder horn to the blanket. Okay. And this is showing Simon Gray. This is after the Revolution War ended. Uh, and he's playing some games. And you have like the cool look. You got the silhouette. You got uh, a blank white thing showing, you know, with no background, which is not laziness. This is I'm emphasizing cinematically isolation. And then you get this. This is probably like a, uh, a uh, drawing uh, of like a photograph of the woods. Okay. Simon Gertie was Irish. It was from an Irish family uh, in uh, Pennsylvania here. Um, their father was killed by a British officer. He was a traitor, meaning he traded with the, uh, the Indians. And like I said, I'm going to call them Indians. I don't call them Native Americans. Native American is a loaded uh, communist, amongst other things, term. Uh, used for purposes I find abhorrent today. Um... And this comic shows Simon Gertie. They show his stepfather how his stepfather was burned to death uh, by the Indians. Okay, who uh, none of this is sugar coated. Okay, they tortured. You know, especially at the behest of the women. Okay, you know when they lost men, they wanted revenge. So the cruelty of the feminine is shown, uh, and the horrible things that they did to this guy. I mean, this guy died really horribly, and then what was done with the young. Uh, white men, I guess you'd call them. Uh, he had to run the gauntlet. And they beat the hell out of him, but he survived. And then you get this subtle thing here. Where the woman is now, the Indian young Indian squaw is healing him. And saying to him, you ran well, young one. You were brave, strong. You will now be one of us. And this is something the Indians did. We will care for you. We will love you. You will live with us and none shall harm you. Never again will one of our people raise a hand against you. So already you're not seeing any simple black and white. You know, the Indians are, are, are victims or noble, uh, but, but also very human. And yeah, they never hit their kids. Okay, Unlike too many Europeans, uh, too many European uh, Christians. Uh, let's not get into that. <laughs> so... The brothers grow up, and they're like the in-betweeners. They're, they're in the wilderness. You know, they, they're translators for the Indians. They trade with the Indians. They lead uh, expeditions and uh, hunts into there. But now we have the Revolutionary War coming, and, uh, you know, the British are able to have the Indians side with them against the Americans. Uh, so, like I said, look at this art. It's just, it goes on. Simon eventually turns... On the Americans after being screwed one too many times, okay, uh, by people, uh, he starts joining with the Indians. Uh, what do we got here? We got Simon Kenton, the famous guy, was his friend, okay, who fought for the other side. Uh, but Simon Kenton, years later, when Gertie was dead and was uh, accused of all these atrocities, his friend. Simon Kenton said he wasn't responsible for that. He stuck up for his friend, even though they fought for different sides later. Uh, he knew, because he was there. He knew that he was not responsible for many of the atrocities attributed to him. All right, so, pretty much you see, you see how you know, the battles here. You see the disadvantage the Americans and, uh, you know, are in combat with the Indians. The Indians know the terrain. They're all warriors, uh, but they're outnumbered. Okay, and the British, the British government, uh, are very uh, unreliable allies. And you get, like, for example, you get this scene here where the a captured American officer is going to be burned to death. And this horrible scene here, you know, Gertie is blamed for this. And it doesn't sugarcoat the brutality of the Indians. Okay, uh, this is a really powerful scene. This guy is basically burned to death and is begging to be shot. Okay. And we go here, it goes back and forth. It shows other scenes here too, like uh, you know, the, just a lot of battles. Look at that art. You get scenes like this. Where is it? 
I mean, I mean, there's so much to get into. I could barely do a review here of everything. And I'm just trying to show you the scenes I like, like this, this scene. But the tide turns on the Indians. The Americans are now, you know, especially with this guy, Mad Anthony Wayne, beat the Indians at their own game, and now they're defeated. And you get this uh, disgraceful thing, which the British, and when I say the British, I mean the British leadership, uh, they would abandon their allies. Whenever the tide turned, they would, they would have no problem abandoning their allies. And here you have the Indians are like, you said you would help us in battle, keep your word. Okay, but the, the uh, British uh, leadership was not going to help them, okay, because they were officially at peace. This is after the Revolutionary War, by the way. This is when the Americans are now getting, uh, looking to try to grab uh, Canada and places like Detroit, which are not American yet. Okay? But I like this. Not, but some of the British had kept their words, and you had British soldiers who broke ranks and helped the Indian allies. Now, I know you're, what you're thinking. In these goings down, uh, you're a traitor. You're sympathetic to me white men who are helping Indians fight other white men. Well, you can take whatever you want, okay? Uh, but I'm just showing how this was. Men that kept their word uh, to help these uh, people that were now being defeated. Uh, and by the way, one thing I have with dissident right, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, I already told you I don't like the term white, but European identitarian, whatever you want to call it. You realize that we're the Indians now right anyway i like this scene here too where uh the americans are taking detroit the british are leaving and all the tories and, and whatnot are moving to canada and because canada is a safe place the canadians were actually able to fight the americans off uh and i like this scene here look there's one tory who ain't left yet and they realize it's simon gurdy and he's like that's the devil simon gurdy because his reputation uh, it precedes him, and I like this. Come, I come, you hateful Yankee scum. Take this city as you've taken everything else. Take it, I say, into blazes with you. Okay. And then the sad, uh, well, you got here Tecumseh. Now, this guy was amazing. Tecumseh, uh, they almost did it, man. He almost united the Indians enough to stop the Americans. Uh, but, and he also stopped. He was against the torturing of prisoners, which is a big thing. Uh, like I said, all these horrible things the Indians did bit them on the ass later when the tide turned. Uh, and like I said, Simon Gurdy lived to his 70s as an exile in Canada, remembered as a traitor. Uh, and like too many, way too many of these, these men who were Indian or, or Irish or American or otherwise, too many of these guys ended their lives like this, drinking themselves to death a lot of them simon kenton also drank himself to death peter williamson uh you know, a lot a lot of indians who had been defeated leaders if they survived they drank themselves to death you know just like people today are drugging themselves to death and these were hard men so what the hell is a modern soft you know westerner gonna do right but you know what there's a lot you can do so in the end here, I like this. There's just more research. It's, it talks about the individual people, what their fates were. Okay. Um, let's see, I like this part here. Simon Kenton, right? He's a famous frontiersman, along with Daniel Boone. Okay. But later in life, in an interview, he insisted Gertie had never committed the atrocities for which he was blamed. So this guy stuck up for his friend to the very end. Okay. When everyone was saying he was the devil. Um, Tecumseh, right? And uh, right, you, you know, he, he, he forbade the torching of American prisoners. Okay, of course, Tecumseh in the end was killed, but whatever. The point I'm making is this is a great comic, and uh, Timothy Truman is someone you should check out. And like I said, this is a very nuanced, brutal tale. Okay, uh, it doesn't take any sides, it just showed shows what happens, and it showed this man who was in between worlds, uh, and like you said. He lived his life almost entirely in the wilderness. And like I said, yeah, we're the Indians now, especially in America. Okay, So uh, have a little uh, respect, just like Americans did 100 years ago, uh, for the Indians. Later.